you're still watching in ways now ladies it's time for some real talk mm -hmm. today is national girlfriend day an annual event that rolls around every august 1st now romantic partners will come and go jobs are won and lost but no matter what happens your girls will be there in a crunch it's time to honor your ride or die crew of homegirls so why do we love our girlfriends so much? Because they are like sisters, but without any of the growing up baggage. Plus, when times are tough, your girls will let you vent. I know mine will. <laughs> and, would, and when you're done, they will offer up support and, uh, and give you all the support that you need to get through the situation. So, happy girlfriend's day to Nama Panga, Priscilla Benjamin Olaoye. Oh yeah. Which other person should I add? Just the two of them is fine for now. I <laughs> have plenty. Have <laughs> plenty. I have <laughs> but what's who is your ride or die? <laughs> Lami. I don't want to mention them. Why? My ride number? or die has yeah. died. Oh. Wow. Oh. Her name was Ehiname oh. oh. And that was a friend in need and a friend oh. in need. Wow. That was my ride or die. Wow. Oh. After that, we just get along. Like uh, Chinas okay. said, have friends in your bucket that list. That was going to say her. that. So I think have me, your friends in your bucket list. Yes. Mm. For me, I have different friends for different reasons. When I need to have intellectual discussions, I know who to call. Yeah. When I want to talk about parties, I know whom to call. <laughs> when I'm talking about children, I know who to but call. But I think for ride or die, I think it is the kinds of friends that stay with you in your lowest point. That was my friend. Do you understand? Me. So for yes. me, um, Noma... I mean, she's seen every every part of me. She's seen wow. the worst of me and all of mm. that. And you know, and she still loves you for being oh, no, you. No, and she's, that is what a that's, friend that's friendship. is. That's friendship. So, yes. I mean, it's the day to just call your friend and say hello to them. I've had friends that betrayed me that I truly loved. Of course. You know, ah, that one is very black. <laughs> we shouldn't even go there. We shouldn't go there. All right, so let's leave that matter. Oh, what did you find for us, Lamy, in the news today? <laughs> okay, um, breaking news. Surprise, surprise. What happened? The Lagos State Government has approved the reopening of um, worship centers for, mm. I think, next week. So I think Muslims are going back to their worship center on the 7th, mm. while Christians will go on the 9th. Mm. So the question is, are you ready to go back to church? Do you have that confidence to go back to church? No. Well, I saw this coming. And in all honesty, um, when I think I was having this conversation with Sandra yesterday, and I said something to her. I said, see, the truth is, we have been going out. We've been coming to work. We've not stopped. We've not sat in our homes, you know. Yeah. So for me, I think what I am most concerned about is not me. I can coordinate myself. Children. I can control myself. What I am concerned about is other people. Do you understand? That just throw caution to the wind. What about the so, children? Yeah, the children as well and all of that. So for me, I think in all, at this point where we are, COVID is here to stay. Thank you. No, I've always so said we that. have to find a way to live, live around, around it. it. Yes. That's, so my, we can't, that's my take. We can't keep shutting down every other yeah. thing. Yeah. Because How long are we going to do this? has to go on. And we cannot also live in fear. So, I mean, so there's it's a thin line. Yeah. There is also another thing I would look at. I would look at it from the um, point of view that, oh, this is, uh, in church, we actually sit in close proximity. Yeah. But when we go out, no, we no, no, I'm sure all of those that. things will be changed. So that is my all concern. All those things will be changed, sitting, you know. All those things will be in. changed, yeah. Yes. But how long? How long are we going to do? For as long as it takes. Wow. Mm. That's my take. Well, I completely day. agree with Ua. Life has to continue. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. COVID-19 cannot just make us stop living. We have to live around it. So I've always had that position. So okay. I think I'm ready to go back to church. So for my But stuff, my own concern is I have a three-year-old. How do mm -hmm. I control that yeah. my environment? Yeah. That's mm -hmm. just a concern for me. All right, so Isi, what did you find for us in the news? Okay, for me in the news, what I found was that 30 Nigerian girls are actually um, stuck in Lebanon and they are calling on the government of Nigeria and the president of Nigeria to actually come in to come to their aid yeah. and this is um, why the story actually resonates with me is that time and time again we've had I issues of individuals stuck in Lebanon because they have been trafficked to that um, environment yeah. and time and time again we have re screamed about it that we need to stop 
um, Africans or Nigerians from going to that access. And if you look at it, most of them are coming from Edo State. Uh, state. So yeah. I think it is high time we actually educate the individuals that are in Nigeria as well as those who are about to leave so that they know what they're getting into. And it, you see, this is not a, a thing of having individuals just come in. There are close relatives that actually come yeah. to them to poach them and take and them to parents. these areas. So it is essential that parents shouldn't trust or entrust their daughters or individuals to whoever comes well, in and says that they're bringing their children in to work for them. Well, that's, that's true, but for me, the, the, the little I know about all this movement to other parts of the country, sometimes it's not really even about parents at this point anymore. Some of the people actually want to, they just, they want because they have, yeah, because they, they've been fed this lie that it is only when you go abroad that you can make it in it, life. It's pure economic value. I know, that's what I'm saying. <coughs> so so it's, at some point, it's not, it, it goes beyond, it goes both beyond parents. for the parents yeah. and both for the individuals. Yes, All right, so my story Sorry. quickly, because we don't have time, okay. um, I just wanted to quickly um, um, bring to the, the four, the, you remember the senator from Adamawa North, um, the lawmaker, Elisha Abo. Um, his case has been, he won the case of assault. Um, that was um, instituted against him before the mag magistrate court in Zuba, Abuja, by the Nigerian police force. You remember the video that went viral of when he was um, seen to be slapping a young girl at a sex toy yes. shop? Yeah, so Absolutely. the guy has won the case and um, a lot of outrage. I saw Alibaba posting on Instagram saying that <laughs> this is why, <coughs> you know, this is why we are, we are where we are in Nigeria, that because even with clear evidence that this guy assaulted this girl, and he even came out and did a video to say that he was apologizing to the girl and all of that. So I, I wonder how he won that case in court of an <coughs> assault that was filed against him. Well, we, said the same thing. Yeah, so we really can't um, dwell on it because we really ran out of time, but I would love to bring this topic and I would like to hear, Lami, from your legal angle, what you think would have gone wrong in this case? Anyway, because of, we are out of time, I think that the magistrate court is just the first instance. Mm. They can still go up to the Supreme Court on this yeah. matter. So the, the, the gate is enclosed. Okay. okay. But All we'll right. have time to discuss that in details. All right. So yeah. we'll see you after the break as we discuss substance abuse. Please stay with us. We'll be right back.